thanks for that Andy uh, probably most of you are thinking who the hell is Jeff Owen um, some of you might now be recognizing the voice I'm that monotonous bloke who keeps putting videos down on the Facebook group on how to do the ordering site how to do the wallet how to do the question and answer and things like that about the ordering site um, Andy has asked me to come in front of the videos for a change and show my face so break out of a comfort zone and I've agreed to do it so prepare yourself be prepared I'm about to uh, show my face yes this is Jeff Owen uh, you probably weren't expecting that were you um, so also Andy has asked me to do a bit of a training on uh, goal setting and visualization so Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, I'm coming, hang on. Right, yes, I'm Jeff Owen. Um, obviously, there's been a bit of a technical issue there. Um, so, yes, Andy has asked me to tell you my story, a bit of training on goal setting, and try to make it fun. So, so I've got to start talking fast, because basically, I've got about 50 years to get into the next 20 minutes. Um, I was born in Tunstall Stoke on Trent, 56 Clanway Street, front bedroom upstairs. Uh, terraced house, tin bath, outside toilet, and so a nice basic start, but it was life. And then, oh, right then, obviously I moved on, I went to school, and in the junior schools, um, those were not basically not uh, teaching aids they were weapons of mass destruction most of the time they were aimed at me uh, second day in junior school i was asked by the teacher said right can anybody remember my name and i sat at the back i went polly parrot polly parrot and uh, the teacher was not best pleased because her name was miss parrot uh, she had me out to the front and whacked me over the knuckles with a 12 inch ruler uh, on the third whack, uh, I got the best of it because the ruler shattered. And then I went to the senior school. Uh, things got bigger and that's where I was first introduced into the three foot rule. And the three foot rule was obviously bigger and it hurt a bit more than the one foot. Also other things that were there, the sawn off cricket bats, the paragraphs, detention and 100 lines. I did quite a few 100 lines. In fact, I think I could have written War and Peace six times over with the amount of lines I just had to write. Uh, especially once when uh, I got caught using the two pens I sellotaped together, uh, then I had to do 400 lines. So things really got a, a little bit worse then because they introduced me to the cane. Yes, I did have the six of the best, three of the best. I was caned regularly, not every month perhaps every couple of months, uh, but uh, I got used to it. So then also I was quite an entrepreneurial child, even in the junior school I was chopping sticks and going around with my little trolley selling sticks to all my neighbours to get them, help them get the fire started. Uh, but that business failed after a few years because people were getting gas fires and they didn't want my little sticks. I was set up a window cleaning round, I worked in a chip shop at uh, the weekends and evenings. Uh, I was peeling potatoes, I did get in trouble with that. I just put potatoes in the big peeler, set it off, go chat to the women at the front, forget about the potatoes, go back and then find little marbles and I had to throw in the bin before anybody caught me. Then six weeks holidays in the senior school, started doing six weeks holidays and working in uh, different places. One time it was in the pot bank and that's where I met Stan the Man and Stan the Man was one of the last saga makers bottom knockers in Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, so if you're not sure what a saga makers bottom knocker is, yes it is a real job, then go on Google and you'll see what Stan was doing for half his life. Uh, butchers, uh, building sites and everything. And then when I left school I got my first job working down the pit and the first mine was a mile deep so I used to go to more, uh, work in the morning, drop down a mile then go to work and spend about eight hours lying on my side because it was a three foot seam 
Luckily, after a couple of months, went to Silverdale Colliery. It was eight foot seam, so we only had to duck a little bit there. Go down the shaft in the morning and then spend 20 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes lying on a conveyor belt taking us to work uh, to where the face was. We only had 20 minutes for snapping, which was dinner time, and uh, we had jam butties, that's all we could eat down there because it was that dusty, dirty, smelly. Um, but miners, if you talk to any ex miners, then get them into your business because they've got a fantastic work ethic. That's where I got my work ethic from. So that was uh, as a coal miner. Oh, right, then things started to move on. I left the pit. So then I joined the Royal Air Force. So, let's get some kit up and see what comes next. So, yes, I joined the Air Force and uh, I spent six years working on the Vulcans, then I did Buccaneers, um, but eventually I moved to Crash and Smash, which was like Crash Recovery, and that's really good job travelling the country, the world, just picking up crashed aeroplanes, moving aeroplanes that uh, couldn't fly. And this is also where we went to Lockerbie. So 30 years ago, I was sitting on the back of a, the tailgate of a Chinook helicopter on Christmas Day, flying 100 foot over Lockerbie, plotting, plotting all the wreckage so we could start recovering it. That was okay until five minutes into the flight got a message over the headset saying don't move Jeff we forgot to strap you in so uh, luckily they strapped me in and I survived then went out to the Gulf War and this is when if you've got a boss don't believe everything they say uh, because we were told that where we were accommodated we would be safe from the Scud missiles the first Scud missile landed about 300 yards from where we were accommodated then when the war started, I was actually working in a little secret establishment uh, in the desert, a little compound. I got 14 blokes with me. Uh, one of them came, he'd heard it over the radio that war had started. So I got everybody together, said, right, things have got serious now. Uh, the war has started, so make sure you've got your gas masks, your live ammunition. And one of the lads chirped up, said, oh, I suppose I better put the kettle on now. So that broke the atmosphere, so it's always some fun. Whatever you're doing, have a bit of fun. Then I got posted from Crush and Smash, ended up at RAF Cosford, and had a boss who I just couldn't get on with. So uh, I started looking at ways of getting out of the Air Force. But luckily at the time, I'd actually started doing Clean Easy on a part-time basis. Um, they're earning about £300 a month just doing the catalogues, got a little couple of people in the team um, but then they announced an uh, international conference on Cunard Sea Goddess and that one really fired me up because we realised if we could qualify for that then that would be in a position where we were bronze distributor got two gold legs and we'd be earning about two and a half thousand pound a month and that would be enough for me to actually leave the Air Force so I talked to my sponsor and I found out how we could do it and one of the things that came up was this mumbo jumbo of goal setting and visualisation and I thought well let's give that a go. So I saw that picture in the brochure of some girl on a jet ski and I'd been jet skiing in Scotland and it was freezing but really enjoyed it so I got that picture on my goal board. Also we went to uh, the travel agent got the Cunard brochure and in there was a deck plan and I'd got that deck plan at the side of my bed and I looked at that deck plan every night because I had this idea of qualifying for that and sending a fax from we're on Cunard heading note paper to the RAF at Cosford saying thank you very much I'm off and I pictured that and we saw a room on there that was the middle number of my RAF number, 318. So I thought, we're going to qualify, I'm going to be in that room 
and I plotted away from that room, walking down the corridor, counting eight doors, up three flights of stairs, turn left, three doors, and that was the radio room. So every night before I went to bed, I looked at those pictures and imagined that journey. And 12 months time, we actually qualified for that. And as soon as I got on that boat, first thing I do is threw the bags into the room and then walked out, closed my eyes, counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight doors, up three flights of steps, turned left, and there was the radio room. So I travelled that journey. So I've been there for 12 months, and so law of attraction, things fell into place, people came into the team, and the business grew. We qualified for that, and we ended up in... Uh, the Cunard Sea Goddess. So that was the first step, and um, that then enabled me to uh, leave the Air Force. So this was on the last day in the Air Force, went to work RAF uniform and came away with my Bar Barbados shirt, and that was Graham and Margaret, who are our sponsors, hired the stretch limo and took me out on that last day. Have you seen a little red circle there? If you have a bit of a close up, there might be somebody you recognise there, a young Michael Katkar. Yes, he came with us on the last day. So then, oh, right, something happened then. That enabled me to leave the Air Force and become clean, easy, full time. And it got a little bit more casual, no ties, no shoes, and that was it. Clean, easy, full time, and uh, that was our ticket, and that's how we became the Freedom Group. Freedom to do what you want to do, when you want to do it. And a couple of years later, Clean Easy introduced another international conference, and that was to Sun City in South Africa. And once again, that really excited me because I used to surf wherever I could in the country, the world, wherever I was in the RAF, used to get surfing, and Sun City had got the biggest inland surf pool in the world. I knew about it beforehand, and I thought we've got to qualify for that. So I went into that visualization, the goal setting again, and uh, if you look at the top picture, that was a picture out of the brochure that showed that surf pool and that was where we qualified we actually got there and i took that photo of the wallet with the surf pool in the background uh, one of the things that i did as well we've got a local um, african garden center and i used to go down there as often as i could i do the follow-up calls because they've got all the um, african trees and plants and all the uh, African music, the birds singing, uh, so it, it was like being in Africa. So that was a goal setting thing and it surprised a few people when I was doing the follow up course, they wondered where I was. So we ended up, we qualified for that, so then I used the same technique a few years later, a couple of years ago, I obviously involved with the coal mining and I wanted to try and help to save a coal mine up Stoke and so I put a visualisation board, a presentation saying this is what we want to actually save that mine and some of the things were drones, we wanted drone footage, we wanted to get it on the television, local press, get local universities involved, uh, architects to plan what it could be like, having a vision and make a film and a book about it and over the next 12 months things have started to come into place we've been on channel 4 on um, the hidden britain drone by drone uh, so channel 4 been on the lloyds advert with our pit uh, people got inside to the internal photos they broke in but we didn't mind they did the job that we wanted uh, universities have been involved and we've started making the film and that was all because we put it down put it down in writing we made a plan and things started to happen but obviously then things started to go down with clean easy 
and uh, so last year um, I had to have another change. Now that was just a quick change. I then went and jumped out of a comfort zone and became a cycling instructor. Uh, the next door neighbour had been trying to get me to do it for eight years. I kept saying no, kept saying no. And then he asked me again, and this is by perseverance, don't take no as an answer the first time, just keep on going at people. And I broke out of a comfort zone because I realised I'd never ridden a bike for 42 years and took the course, I then qualified, so now I can teach kids, adults how to ride bikes, take them on the roads and do whatever. But that was a, a, a comfort zone I had to get out of and I still do it now because it's very flexible, I choose when I go in. And, but what happened quickly after that, Michael Catcar came along and introduced Viva MK. So now obviously I'm doing Viva MK and fitted it around the cycling so they fit hand in hand. And another goal setting exercise we did uh, a couple of years ago, um, I had somebody in to give us a quote for a new bathroom and the quote came in at about eight and a half thousand pound. I thought yes very nice but I'm not paying that much money. But they did leave me with that image there and I thought, yeah, that was good. So I put that on our gold board and that had been there for about four years. And as things were quieting down at Clean Easy, I thought, right, now I'll put some time in, get the bathroom sorted. And I decided to do it myself, learn a few new things, plastering. So I gutted it back to bare brick insulation board on the external walls to make it warmer found out how to plaster YouTube is a good training medium and I should have done it now because Mike Bibby uh, could have given me a bit of training on that so went to work got it done so as you see from old to new and things get worse at the beginning but you've got to have a vision of what you want it to look like so got it completed and if you see there, got some nice blinds. I saw those blinds, thought, yes, definitely want those. Uh, but what happened, I put that together as a full training for our team uh, last year. And I didn't realise at the time, but the blinds that I actually fitted, I've got the same clouds that were on that original picture that have been on the gold board for four or five years. So, good point there. If you had goal setting, write down exactly what you want <coughs> because you can end up with it <coughs> and as I said I didn't know the clouds were there to put that training together so be very specific on what you do want don't write about debt write about the things you want why you want them and why you can't do without them and that's what we did so we ended up with the bathroom but you have got to plan it. It just doesn't happen. You've got to plan what you want and you've got to work towards it. Uh, there's a couple of things we had. We had a plan, uh, to-do lists, and you've always got to keep working towards what you want. If you want more information about that, then I recommend you watch The Secret. Really good film. Uh, if you go on YouTube and just put it in there, usually the full version is on there. Um, another good easy book is Seven Strategies for Wealth and Happiness, uh, Jim Rohn, have a look at that. And also uh, have a word with Rob Foster because he really, he was the king of visualisation, vision boards and his board, he virtually got everything that he'd got. It was his fridge door to start with um, but then he had a new fridge so he had to get uh, more vision boards so Rob Foster the king of visualization so really that's it so I'll just do a, a quick recap don't worry we're at the end now um, <clears throat> whatever you've done in the past use it as a reference but don't live there if you've got good things then remember those good things remember what you did to achieve that good thing if you've got bad things learn from the mistakes that got you there and put them behind you so your future starts today so set your goals and um, but you've got to see it see it feel it use all the senses smell it hear it 
and obviously don't taste it if it's a car but you can smell it you can feel it you can hear it and get all those senses in and picture yourself as already having achieved it achieved it so believe it and then plan it but work for it all the time and you will achieve it if you don't have goals then you're just going to stay where you are you've got to move forward all the time if you've got something to aim for then that's going to push you forward so right i hope you've enjoyed that because now the serious bit comes so you might recognize that music you've seen a little bit of stripping going on now so are you all ready for five minutes of the full monty but don't worry thank you very much that's your lot my viva mk kit has stayed on i'm off Okay, bye now.